Oh, she's going to be available if you want to contact her later. Now, so we have the LACNAC program. The next speaker comes, um, is in, there are two our friends of uh, Brazil, of the Academic Network. They are going to present a uh, work that is called SOC RP, a holistic vision of cybersecurity. Joao Coelho Guimarães Neto, who's the technical leader of the SOC RP, and uh, Andres Ricardo Landim, who at present is a CSERT uh, uh, expert, and they're going to show what uh, they are developing. So, welcome. Good morning, everyone. Well, apparently there's a small problem with uh, the presentation. Oh, there it is. Good morning, everyone. My apologies for this delay. There was a, a small problem with the presentation. I'm Joao Guimaraes. We're going to talk about soccer RNP. I'm going to give you uh, an overview of what RNP is uh, initially. So let us briefly talk about how we work with this SOC, some concepts, the implementation plan, the uh, basic functions, how we plan this uh, RNP. Um, we're going to talk about RNP itself and also the technical makeup, uh, what kind of technology we are using, how we are working with this monitoring, and we'll also we'll talk about uh, the challenges. We really faced uh, several challenges, and we are still facing them, but there are benefits as well. So here, let me explain. Um, here we present this SOC that we are bringing to the center, its security operations center. And here we have the main pillars, per, um, uh, people, processes, and technology. And here, let me share my our mission. Our mission is to um, uh, transmit some uh, visibility to on cybersecurity to the different uh, organizations. Sorry, I missed. Uh, the presentation. I'm going to talk about the way the idea uh, occurred to us of creating this uh, um, center 
um, security center. But RNP is uh, the innovation, the research and innovation agency in Brazil. The RNP started to help in the implementation of the internet in Brazil over 30 years ago. Hence, we have a security core that is called KAIS. KAIS has been the, KAIS has been uh, there for 25 years. It's, it was about uh, one of the first in uh, Brazil. So. Uh, RNP incorporated security from the beginning. KAIS is a cybersecurity, um, uh, is uh, the uh, agency in charge of cybersecurity. 25 years ago, uh, cybersecurity was not the problem it is today. And because of a lack of professionals and the demand for professionals in the market, uh, this uh, gap um, that had to be solved. And that is why RNP built this uh, uh, cybersecurity um, workforce to uh, try to serve uh, the uh, rest of the politicians. In RNP, we have over 800 institutions. And the idea of uh, the center of uh, security, security operations center is uh, to uh, meet the needs of these uh, teaching centers. today. SOC is a key element to unite, synthesize, and to provide inputs to different areas of RNP, specifically within KAIS, that is the security core that has several actions in terms of cybersecurity. So with all this visibility and all of the inputs that it will that SOC re will receive from the institutions, it will produce input for other areas. For instance, CSERT, Red Team, uh, Governance, uh, Cloud, and others. Our task, uh, um, the, the sc uh, scope of our task, uh, uh, and uh, the uh, layers are the next uh, issue. We want to present a SOC that won't just limit itself to give alerts or analyst sitting in, um, uh, with a tool uh, to find new alerts. We want to work with uh, the intelligence of cybersecurity. We want to be able to prevent attacks before they occur. And when if they occur, to act uh, quickly and effectively. We have an external network vision. And since NRP offers these links to institutions, we want to provide a security perspective from the backbone to the institution while checking the logs of the institution, the internal applications, and uh, the internal network. So we want to work in the protection and the mo uh, security monitoring comprehensively. Here we have the layers from the uh, network to the internal um, networks in the institution. And here we have our function that is not limited to detection, but also prevention. We want to be more pre proactive and not so reactive. So let's go back to this diagram. As I was telling you, the mission of the SOC is precisely to offer visibility in terms of security offer advanced detection and response to these incidents. And why should we do that? Well, incidents will happen, whatever we do. No institutions are 100% secure. So when the incidents do occur, we need to be ready to uh, uh, face them and to solve them the best way possible, as quickly and effectively as possible to reduce uh, to a minimum the time down or the losses uh, due to those attacks. So then we have the security operations. That's what we do 24-7, precisely treating incidents, supervising, generating intelligence, all that to be able to anticipate attacks, anticipate and uh, protect uh, the institutions from any attacks of before they happen. And all that is done through developing intelligence in the security part. Our SOC at present is in Brasilia. And the idea is to uh, distribute it. Today, RNP has, is present in every state in Brazil. Just a second. Let me have some water.
So as I was saying, RNP has a point in which it is present in every state in Brazil. So our idea is to be able to have a SOC in each of those points of presence. So the SOC will then monitor those institutions that are linked to it. We also have a project together with Chile, Chile from Reuna, from Mexico and Red Clara, in order to extend this SOC internationally, at least in Latin America, so that we can share information. Maybe the same problem we have in Brazil is also a problem they have in Chile or in Mexico or in Ecuador or in other places. So this is the concept. The current team has N1 analyst, N2, and N3 analysts as well. So N1 is something that we do 24-7, and this is a task that is in the front line receiving all the alerts and dealing with those alerts as well as working with all the organizations, obtaining data and the flagged logs. So then we can analyze this and really understand if there is a suspicion or not, and if this can deserves being studied in greater depth. So this is when N2 and N3 come in, when we have to study this in greater depth in order to determine whether there are vulnerabilities or indicators of possible compromise. So this is a team we have. The processes are at the core of everything. So you might have a 24-7 team, but if this is not properly organized. So the processes are very important. This then allows us to outline where we stand, where we want to go, and how we're going to go about this, as well as the best way to proceed, which is the fastest way of doing things. We always try to optimize our day-to-day -day work. So as I was saying, there might be incidents, and it is our job to give the fastest solution or response possible. Now, the workflows we have as to how the analyst will then deal with these points, this should also be organized because there's no point in having this incident center and being aware that this has been rapidly, but we have to have trained staff, otherwise this won't work. We also are, have integration with other teams. This is also very important because everything is interrelated. Sometimes we might need help from another team or an analysis conducted by another team. So everything is very well defined. We also have platforms. We need to understand what platforms we will need, how we're going to configure these platforms, this is very important because otherwise we will receive a large flow of alerts and sometimes these are false positive alerts and because of the large volume of data we cannot detect this. So the team often gets used to receiving false positives. They won't give them the, relevant, the appropriate relevance and sometimes they might require due attention. So we have to configure these properly and we have to understand the business properly so we can see what are the tools that are best suited. So everything has to be integrated. There are some enormous players in the market. There are some very important companies. We also have open source and other smaller companies that are joining us now. So everything has to be integrated in order to have intelligence and speed in our response. So as I was saying, the purpose of the SOC is to be right at the center and relating RNP with all the processes, with all the sectors and as well the security cores of the other areas. And at the same time, linking this to the different organizations. As I was saying, we're going to receive input from the organizations so as to monitor everything that is occurring in the SOC. And we will then incorporate this internally in order to have input for other areas. In this way, we will always be able to increase the level of maturity and security while we reduce the risk for the organizations. Thank you.
So I was telling you all about this. I hadn't gone forward with my slides. And these are the different areas of the RMP and how these relate to the different institutions. Over here, we can understand what we consider the RN is the RNP system. This includes all those institutions related to the RNP backbone. These are more than 800 institutions, as I mentioned before. And even RNP is considered one of the SOC clients and is part of a monitoring system. In, the ph in phase one, we have part of the RNP system, as well as some of the points of presence, then part of RNP, as well as services. So these services are the services delivered by RNP. In this initial phase, we want to monitor this inside RNP in a very correct way in order to then expand these to other institutions. This will allow us to generate intelligence for the different institutions. Now, the solutions are further services that we have at RNP delivered by other areas and not necessarily the security areas. The clients are at the bottom and will be incorporated into the monitoring. Now, we also have the framework that deals with detection and response at the talk. We receive an alert, we deal with this, we mitigate the alert, and the idea we have is to identify and protect this prior to the incident, before the incident happens. So now let me speed up a bit because we're running short of time. This is a security operations center in Brasilia. There are no windows. And it is totally closed. The analyst can work. They can optimize monitoring. And there's a lot of critical information that cannot be shared with anyone else. So that is why this room is completely closed. What the analysts see on the screen can be done perfectly well in that room. We inaugurated the SOC on August the 29th at the RNP forum. This was a very interesting forum with representatives from the Ministry of Education, from the Ministry of Science and Technology. We also had executives from RNP. All my team is here, the director, and this was also there. So everyone was at this event. And the inauguration ceremony can be viewed in YouTube in RNP's channel. So if you're interested in seeing how this was, I recommend you to view it. This here summarizes what I already mentioned. So let us skip this. We already discussed this during my presentation. But briefly, this is to provide visibility to have advanced response in our security operations while always generating intelligence. So what we do is to work on monitoring. We also conduct threat hunting. Later on, we're going to speak about how we manage vulnerabilities on an ongoing basis. We're going to produce reports on vulnerability for the institutions, and then we might produce these at a shorter period of time. These vulnerability reports are produced every 15 days or once a month so that the institutions know what the vulnerabilities are and how they can deal with these. So when vulnerabilities come up, we can try to make it take eight and contain these vulnerabilities in a shorter period of time. These are three phases of the SOC that are related to the tools. Nowadays, we have a foot in each of these phases. We made far much, much more progress in the initial phase. We already started doing things in the second phase, and we already have made some progress in the third phase. <coughs> we are working a lot with anti-DDoS, because the concept for the first SOC phase and what I mentioned before is to offer visibility to the institutions from outside towards the inside. And because we have our backbone and because we deliver links to the institutions, we also want to provide this visibility on the security and protection based on this backbone. So we have anti-DDoS 
tools. We have vulnerability management, which I mentioned earlier. We also do security incident management, IDS, XDR. This has already been implemented, but only at RNP. We don't have XDR yet for the institutions, but this is a project that we'll be tackling in the future because we're going to start monitoring the institutions. We also have security rating. This is a tool that we hire. This is available in the market and is very interesting. This offers us visibility and reports with the different risk levels of the institution. So this, together with vulnerability management, allows us to work in the history of the vulnerability of the institutions. We can say, well, this is your risk today. We can lower it to a given level. And then we have SIEM. We are already negotiating things to see what the other tools we are going to use. We made quite a lot of progress here, so we can then start to collect information from the institutions with probes inside these institutions. And then speaking about cloud security and WAF, here we have a process that hasn't advanced so much, but we're already having a dialogue with some of the sectors in the market so we can try and comply with this and provide stability to our SOC project. Here we have the different types of services we offer at present. As I mentioned earlier, anti-DDoS, DDoS, sorry. <laughs> We include monitoring, detection, and mitigation of those institutions related to RMP's backbone. So we have these three options for monitoring denial of service attacks. Then we have network cyber attacks. We do monitoring through an intelligence tool. This tool can also be applied to detect, mitigate, and provide visibility. For example, botnet signatures that are in traffic in the network. We show these to the clients and to the institutions. Then we have vulnerability management. We have ongoing monitoring of vulnerabilities. So this can provide us with a history of the risk level of institutions. In a second stage, we have web application firewalls, cloud security, as well as corporate internal network management. This will be at a second stage of the SOC where we start working with the institutions. And then we have DevSecOps and network security management. And throughout, we also have threat hunting, threat intelligence, and cybersecurity campaigns. All this is very important. We have to really conduct awareness raising campaigns. This slide over here might be a bit busy, but this is the reality we have at the SOC. We have some requests that go in, in to, to us. This can be done through the tool that generates alerts, or this can also occur through threat intel or through threat hunting. The clients then communicate with us, and we know that we cannot have a view over everything. Sometimes things might occur, or there is suspicion within the institution, so they will communicate with the SOC, and then we start with the investigation. SOC works with N1. This is the initial call that we receive. We see where it comes from and where it Get is heading, and depending on the solution, we will start with mitigation. If mitigation is not effective, or if it was effective, we then follow the entire flow, and we end up in input generation for the other areas of case. So this does not occur once again. We want to avoid this from happening. Now, if the mitigation was not effective, we will then go on to N2. N2 is a CSERT team, the POP team, and other tools of RNP. So jointly with the SOC, we're going to work on that, and this will be N3. And then we have a much more specialized team, and this is as if this were a national level concern in order to find a solution to this incident. 
After that, we go back to SOC and we generate demands for other areas. Sometimes an institution may have explored a specific vulnerability and we can try to have a pain test in that, a pen test to see what other vulnerabilities in that institution. In this slide, we see uh, a big a quadrant, a specific quadrant, and we have the best practices uh, how to create a SOC 24-7, the, say, the best uh, incidence response. And I also only have two minutes left. Uh, here, let me tell you about the challenges and benefits. I consider that the challenges are what we have to understand better. And even the challenges that we have are the ones that you may also have. Our main challenge has to do with the complexity of RNP because it's a huge ecosystem. You need to understand all the universities and the teaching centers and their size is very specific because we have very high teaching with the maturity of these security um, institutions and sometimes in the interior of the country they are smaller, they have fewer people, they have a lower level of security and we need to be able to deal with that in a personalized manner. To do that, we have to hold many meetings to understand the business. Another challenge has to do with the complexity of SOC, the tools, processes, and people. That's a, a very important issue, is to be able to find the skilled staff to be able to uh, meet the demands and to work with all the tools we need. The issue of technology, too, is a big challenge to understand what type of technology we need to use, either uh, uh, significant, a large technology or not, and try to measure that so that we won't end up uh, hiring a tool that is too large and we'll only use 10 percent or the other way around. Maybe we can uh, hire a tool that is good today, but in in a year's time, SOC may grow and we may outgrow it. So all that is a very significant challenge. Now let's talk about the benefits. It help. Uh, um, uh, improve uh, the security level to promote uh, the visibility of security. And the idea is to increase the level of security across the country. So if we can start uh, increasing the level of security of all the institutions in Brazil, in consequence, the level of security in Brazil will uh, increase overall. So. Before uh, I finish, let me thank you and my apologies uh, for the confusions with the slides because we changed them in the last minute. That's why it was not available. Thank you. I've run out of time. Uh, we don't have time for questions, but you can contact me through LinkedIn, Roll Gimaraes, or here, and we can discuss it. Thank you. So we have room for questions. We have time for a couple of questions. I'm going to speak Spanish. Yes, yes. Slowly, please. I'm Alejandro Perez Panero of OAS, and my question is very simple. How do you get organized as a SOC to avoid duplication of tasks with a C-cert, whatever it is. How do you organize yourselves to have that, uh, uh, to, to avoid any duplicity? Uh, for instance, incident uh, reports. Yes, I understand. We try to improve and optimize the processes because the processes that are well trained, we, we, we need to meet all of the demands and to orchestrate all that. Um, it's either the, team, the, the machines, the teams in Brasilia and other states. I don't know whether I'm answering your questions. My apologies. Let, let me see. 
I couldn't participate in the presentation, but your question is how do we divide CSERT and SOC activities? Well, when we started with SOC, we thought that the activities um, that are more routine um, and that are executed every day are under the responsibility of SOC. When we have a greater incident, when we have an incident with more technical difficulties, uh, those incidents are sent uh, to the CSERT teams. And uh, so all those all the work is initially done by SOC so when it is necessary to scale up an investigation or an activity about an incident then the C cert is called and they start to coordinate actions and also to conduct activities such as forensics more specifically and situations of that kind. So SOC, in spite of the fact that it has all the intelligence, SOC is more used for more constant activities, while the C-CERT is usually actioned by demand when there's a very big specificity. Thank you. All right. So it's already late, so you can ask him more questions then. I know that this is a very interesting uh, uh, topic. A round of applause for the two speakers. Thank you.